This is Ace Alieri with a special edition of Reviewing the Reviewer, this time on the most recent video, having to do with the Magnavox Odyssey. You know, it's no secret that the Irate Gamer elicits a lot of reactions online. Here are some of mine from his latest video. So, as usual, you can expect only the worst from Mr. Bottom of the Barrel. While Nolan Bushnell was busy with computer space, miles away another man by the name of Ralph Baer also had the idea of creating video games. Mistake number one. Bushnell developed computer space in 1971. Ralph Baer started working on his prototype for what would be the Magnavox Odyssey as early as 1966. Any amount of research will show you that. But hey, here's a more reputable source to tell it like it is. Now in 1966, Ralph Baer works for Sanders Associates. They're like Halliburton. They're a top secret military contractor. But he's secretly using his budget and his resources at work to chase this crazy dream of a TV you can play. Wait, wait, how about these guys? But in 1971, a man named Nolan Bushnell changes everything. He wasn't much of an engineer but he had these great ideas for doing businesses. He saw how he could take the technology we were using at Ampex and make a coin-operated amusement device that might be uh, a hit. He then built this thing called Computer Space. Ralph, who was a skilled engineer, spent a few years building the prototype of his idea. Once completed, he took the device and showed it to the people at Magnavox. Mistake number two. No, actually Bear invited several TV set manufacturers to view and test his product out at his place in Nashua, New Hampshire. RCA, Sylvania, GE, Motorola, and Magnavox reps were all invited in 1969. Hell, the man himself will tell you this on his website if you care to read. How do you do your research? Reading the back of a cereal box? Being impressed with what they saw, they not only bought Ralph's invention, but also filed patents on the technology. Oh yeah! They were so impressed it took them two years to get back to him on this. Magnavox decided to take the risk in 1971. Finally! But you probably already heard this from Bear himself by now. So Magnavox began mass producing the Odyssey. And as you can see, it's a console that's very crude in design. Crudely designed? By 1972 standards, that was state-of-the-art, you Neanderthal! Now the unit comes with two controllers, six game cards, and is powered by six C batteries. So let's go ahead and fire this baby up. Just put the batteries in here, plug in the controllers in there, and connect one end of the video cable into the console, and the other end into the, uh... The, um... Wait a minute. What the fuck is this? That, my thought-impaired friend, is a 1972 cable that is supposed to hook into a TV game switch overload. Come on, man, haven't you ever owned an Atari? Instead of getting a video cable that looks like this, or even this, we end up with this! What an ass-biter! So if we look in the instruction manual, we find that Magnavox used two of the most obscure video connectors on the planet. Meaning if you lose just one of these pieces, you're off Shit's Creek without a paddle. <sighs> Mistake number... I lost count. Look, you're judging this by today's standards, you third-rate dropout. Of course you can't find 1972 cables in a 2009 world. It's hell even finding an RF switch for an NES these days. Back in 1972, it was considerably easier. I don't think Magnavox was worried whether some ignorant butthead was going to be able to find a cable connector in 2009. Did you expect them to have it HDMI compatible for you and everything? Moron. And you just can't find these pieces at your local Radio Shack. Instead, you'll be wasting valuable time searching the universe for a used parts supply store. You saw it on the Irate Gamer first, folks. The galaxy is as big as Cleveland. Uh, yes. Do you have a piece of hooks into this? You do? Excellent. You take American Express? So now that we've finally gotten our cord, let's go ahead and plug it into the TV. Uh, 
how the unit also comes with six of these numbered game cards. And here's a fast fact. If you're thinking that each card carries its own game, you'd be wrong, because the main game is actually built into the Odyssey itself. And when a card is placed into the Odyssey, it's actually creating new command codes so that the game can end up playing differently than before. Meaning each card carries its own game, by definition. Right you are, Odyssey. So here are the dumbest clips of the rest of this review. The second reason is that the game also has a few annoying glitches. Sometimes after hitting the ball, it slowly travels to the other side of the screen. It's supposed to go to the other side of the screen. What a piece of shit! But the worst thing about this game is that both players can travel anywhere on the screen they want to. So how the hell can you even call this a game if you can do anything you want? There's no rules, no restrictions, or even a point system. Boy, this just flips my shit. All shit flipping aside, has this guy ever heard of Grand Theft Auto? Not only is this game terrible, but it's also a good example of how Magnavox might have been trying to market the Odyssey as more of a board game rather than a video game. If you look closely at this overlay, you'll see that it's just like playing a retarded version of Candyland. But instead of candy, we get a white blob of crap. Instead of Peppermint Forest, we get Boring Ass Crack Forest. And instead of Gumdrop Mountain, we get Green Turd Mountain. Ugh, what a poor substitute for Candyland greatness. We could talk about how Candyland actually has more complex rules than that, but I think he pretty much summed his stupidity up with that entire clip. Okay, Simon says nose. Okay, now Simon says foot. All right, now Simon says, penis? Okay, now Simon says, masturbation hand. What the hell's up with these cards? All right, now Simon says, um... Just think, he actually had to make those cards. But this game requires tons of rules and tons of flashcards, making this game tons of shit. <laughs> Okay, so the ball is in the number 9 slot. Well, this would have been nice if the number was actually on the card. Take a good look at the numbers around that supposed 9. See how right side up they are? Now line those up with the 9. Oh, it's a 6. And what a coincidence. The 6 is on the card. Surprising absolutely no one. So on behalf of all gamers, then in conclusion, this is a plea to Mr. Bors. And this is no joke. Listen, you've absolutely no knowledge of video games. You make us all look bad with your lack of research, your work facts, and your overall idiotic statements. You insult a medium that is very dear to me and several other true gamers. If you have any shred of human decency, please... Shut the fuck up!